Thanks for the introduction, Amy. It is great to be a part of the Diabetes Mind Conference this fall. Like everybody else, I wish we were in person, but I promise I will keep this as interesting as possible and as interactive with the Q&A, so let's just dive right in. So I think when we originally dreamt up this presentation, we were talking about 40 plus companies and now we're already over 50. So really exciting to see this area of technology continue to expand just over the course of the last few months. So I think many of you may have seen this picture before, but this is the papal inauguration in 2005. As you can take a look in the crowd, you only see one CG, uh, one smartphone really pictured in the bottom corner here. But this was uh, the point when smartphones were just about ready to take off and explode worldwide. And you can see the difference by 2013. Everybody has a smartphone out. We are on a similar cusp with CGM technology. It is a really exciting period of time to be in right now. And we're gonna talk a lot about some of these new technologies and how this is really gonna revolutionize the CGM space going forward. So today I wanna to talk about a few areas. The first is how has the market evolved and where do we see it going in the future? Then I wanna spend a few minutes highlighting some of the interesting technologies that are in development and then kind of pull it all together and talk about where we see the market headed in 2023 and beyond. So I think many of you know that the worldwide markets, as you can see pictured here, are predominantly dominated by Dexcom, Libre, as well as Medtronic. In Europe, we see a few new entrants in terms of Glucobende and Medtrum, so really interested to see how those technologies will continue to evolve. But for now, we really see the market being dominated by those three big players in the US with Sensionics making some inroads as well. The really exciting thing that we've seen though from our HCP research over the course of the last year or so has been the progression and uptake of CGM technologies. As you can see pictured here the last three years of surveys, there have been some incredible advancements in terms of utilization of CGM. But the really exciting thing to me is looking at 2023 and beyond, where we see explosive growth from both patients as well as clinicians. Now we know one of the big gating factors has historically been the payers. They, this group moves a little bit slower as they need to as they evaluate cost efficacy benefits for millions and millions of people across the US. We see that they are still kind of focused on a reduction in A1C as their primary metric but thankfully, they're continuing to evolve and look at the data and see some of these other metrics like time and range as equally important. So I think over time with a lot of the data that's been generated, we're gonna see a stronger and stronger uptake in the payer community. And from a lot of the research that we've done recently, we can see that starting to take hold. So that's great news for patients and clinicians all around. Now, when we talk about the US, we know some of the really new exciting technologies are coming from the incumbent players. We know that Abbott with their Libre 3 already launched in Europe is pursuing some really exciting advances with that technology. Dexcom G7 promises to be transformative as well. Medtronic Synergy is looking to really rekindle that franchise for Medtronic. And then we know Sensionics is pursuing that XL indication for that 365 day wear period, which will be incredible for Sensionics. And as our research has shown, there's a lot of interest in these new technologies. So if we start by looking at current CGM users, starting on the left-hand side with Libre users, we see a lot of strong loyalty to their current companies and really looking to advance with the next iteration of those technologies. In the middle, we see a similar story for Dexcom users with 83% of them looking to continue on and move to the G7. It's a little bit more of a mixed bag with Medtronic given some of the challenges with their existing sensor. So it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out with Synergy. Now, if we shift gears for a moment and talk about non-CGM users, and if we start down here in the, the bottom left with the MBI users, you can see that Libre 3 edges out G7. If we move into the middle section with pumpers, we see that Dexcom G7 is largely the winner here, and we think that that will continue to evolve as G7 becomes integrated with Omnipod 5, 
as well as future iterations of Tandem's Control IQ. And then on the far right hand side, when we think about patients with type 2 diabetes who aren't using MDI or aren't on pumps, we see that Libre 3 is currently anticipated to be the big winner. Now we're in the midst of refreshing this data at Seagrove and so we'll be sure to share the latest updates with you when we have them available. So there are a couple of other companies who have CGM technologies on the horizon. Well, truth be told, it's more than a couple. It's really incredible to see the development in this space. There are so many companies pursuing solutions here that are better for patients and clinicians. It's really incredible to see. So when you look at the, the breadth of technologies that are in development, how do we start to analyze these? Well, we can kind of segment these into a couple of different categories. The first two being the traditional approaches versus the implantable. And then we have a host of other technologies as well in development. We can further subdivide those into some of the technologies that are pursuing a less invasive approach. We have the watch or band type technologies, and then we have some interesting other technologies, including earrings and other, um, other avenues as well. So before we get going here, I wanted to give a special thanks to Kelly Close and team and Rick at Seagrove, I think we had identified 41 CGM startups in various degrees of development over the last year. And with the help of these two folks and their teams, we were able to identify over 52 and counting. So a lot of tremendous growth in this area. So it was great to have the collaboration to make sure we identified all the players that are up and coming. So first I wanted to focus a little bit on some of those traditional technologies that are in development. These are technologies that are very similar to Dexcom and Libre in terms of the insertion, their pursuit of a very strong MARD and accuracy, and the ability to really use these for insulin dosing. So the first one I wanted to touch on is Glucomen Day. We're particularly interested in this company because they are powered by the folks at Waveform, which is an exciting group of, of people who have a lot of expertise in the BGM and now CGM space. And so we're really looking to see what they do with the next iteration. The current iteration, as you can see listed here, is a couple steps behind Libre and Dexcom, given the higher MARD as well as the daily calibration requirements. So we're interested to see when they take this to the US, will it be with, the next, uh, with, with another iteration that overcomes some of those initial challenges and can be more of a player against the incumbents? Another thing that we look at as we analyze a lot of these CGM companies is, is there anybody who can solve kind of this traditional challenge that you see listed here? While it's great to have the pump technology and CGM technology, I can't tell you how many times when I was at Insulate I heard, can't you just combine these two into one device and have just one item to wear? And so we pursued a lot of different angles when I was there and companies are continuing to do this out in the marketplace today. A lot of companies are pursuing what, what they call a snake bite te technology, which is really two insertions within one device. So just a little hint, anybody who's using the snake bite terminology, that is not very patient friendly. So if you need some help with your marketing, please come to Seagrove. We'd be happy to help steer you away from using terminology like snake bite. But in any event, some folks are continuing to pursue that path with that dual insertion in a single device. But Pacific Diabetes has really taken it to the next level in pursuit of that quote, holy grail of pump and CGM combinations. They're really looking to develop a single device and a single insertion. So what they've been able to do is really pursue a technology that has a hollow cannula that is basically wrapped in a CGM sensing technology. What their studies have shown is that a lot of the challenge with having a CGM and insulin delivery co-located is that the interference that the insulin causes. And it's not just the insulin, but it's in particular the preservatives in the insulin. So there were really two solutions. One is remove the preservatives, which is not going to happen, or develop a system that can get around the interference with those preservatives. And that's what they've done with this redox mediator technology. So it's really interesting technology that allows that co-location of a CGM as well as insulin delivery. 
So really excited to see where they're able to take this technology over the next few years. One tip or suggestion I would give them, and maybe it's just my personal bias, is that uh, you can see the, the device pictured on the far right here. It would be nice if you could remove the tube with that. Just a suggestion. So now let's talk about the implantable devices. These are really looking to build on the great technology that Sensionics has developed, that concept. So if we start out with Glycense, we know one of the big limiters with the Eversense uh, uptake has been the wear period. So Glycense is really looking to develop this two-year implantable. So it's a, it's a great technology um, to be able to use for two years. The other really interesting thing is that there's no, um, no reader or anything that has to be worn on body. It's totally encapsulated in the device. So really excited to see where they take this technology. About a year ago, they received some additional funding, but I haven't seen many updates lately. So hopefully we'll hear more about them in the coming months. Another implantable being pursued is by a company called Indigo. And they're pursuing what they call a CMM technology, which really means that they're going to focus not just on uh, glucose measurement, but they're also going to be focusing on other analytes as well. And they use nanophotonics technology, which is really a pretty cool technology. Basically, they use uh, measurements of the, absorption of the absorption of light in an individual's interstitial fluid to really measure the quantities of metabolites and then being able to report out on them. So really interesting technology. will be interesting to see which analytes they pursue first and um, what, the, what the path is for development thereafter. Now if we move to the less invasive wellness category, potential wellness category, these are devices that, as the name suggests, are they don't have the tradi traditional insertion technique and they may be pursuing a strategy where they're geared more towards health and wellness, meaning they don't have to have as strong accuracy. But others are also pursuing strong accuracy. So it'll be interesting to see how this, this space evolves in particular. So Seagrove has been following a number of different companies in this area for the last few years, and I wanted to highlight a couple of them. The first is a company called Numara. And so Numara is really working with a rechargeable device um, that can help keep the cost down, and they have a daily disposable sensor. So one of the things that really makes this sensor unique is the application process. As you can see, it's a very simple application. Um, it's basically like putting a, a sticker, if you will, on and then having the device reader overlaid on top of that. So very simple uh, insertion, which really makes it more viable for a daily application type process. The other neat thing about Numara is they're really combining the CGM technology with their Sugar Beet application, which is really a diabetes management and coaching service that can um, enhance the way people use CGM. And you'll see a lot of these um, companies in this area are really focusing on that combination of CGM as well as the coaching application. Another one that's really exciting is OneDrop. OneDrop has made some great strides over the last few years in terms of coaching, self-management, and with their OneDrop application focused primarily in the, in the type 2 diabetes space. And recently they announced that they're pursuing a biosensor development that can really do uh, a number of different things. The first will be focused on glucose measurement, but then they also have a number of other interesting um, analytes that they're going to pursue. Um, so this again is a flexible wear, so you're not having to uh, have a device on necessarily for 10 or 14 days. It can be a lot more flexible. Um, you know, existing CGM users may cringe at that, the additional potential burden, while others are really excited about that, maybe people who have um, skin irritation or other issues. And the nice thing about the OneDrop system is that they're also looking to combine that sensing capability with a lot of that coaching service as well. So really interested to see where they take this technology. Another company that we've been following for a number of years is BioLink. They have uh, developed this micro array of biosensors. You can see pictured here the small chip, um, the third kind of image down from the top here. 
So this is a really exciting technology that's going to measure the interstitial fluid glucose levels just under the skin. And as you can see on the right hand side, the insertion is, is intended to be kind of more of a, a push onto the skin where there's just a, a small insertion, if you will, underneath the skin. So very simple application process. Now we've been following BioLink for a while and we heard rumors about a year ago about some challenges with funding and so forth. Uh, but we are really excited to say that in early November, they raised $100 million, so an incredible investment here in the company. A number of um, companies as well as um, not-for-profits like JDRF have invested, Essentia has invested, so it'll be really interesting to see how quickly they can uh, translate this funding into advances in this space. So really looking forward to see more recent accuracy data as well as their development pathway ahead. Finally, if we take a look at some of the other technologies and development with watch, ba watch bands, uh, earrings, other others, um, uh, some of the information on these is a little scant. So we're really interested to see more about these technologies. In fact, today we have the opportunity to hear from No Labs, um, so I, I won't steal their thunder, and nor would I have the expertise to do so. Um, so we'll highlight a couple of the other companies that are further along in development as well. Um, so we have Graphware that measures molecules. They're focused on glucose. Um, they measure these on the surface of their skin using their wearable technology. You can see pictured here, they have a, a watch type device, and then you can also use it as a patch as well. Uh, and they are again looking to combine this with an app service. And so um, details on how the technology works aren't readily available, so we're interesting to see how the pursuit of this technology goes. Another really interesting technology is Movano. They're using radio frequency to do similar measurements at the surface of the skin. You can see how small their uh, their sensor device is and the uh, potential to incorporate it into wearables like you see pictured here. So this is another really interesting space. This has the potential to really enhance the use of CGM outside of the traditional um, intensively managed um, people with diabetes and even moving further and further into that health and wellness space. Um, we also know that Apple's rumored to soon be coming out with some sort of CGM sensing technology. Um, we're not sure how valid those rumors are, but they're continuing to pursue as well. So that would be incredible to see um, that technology advance. So as you can see, there are a ton of companies in development with some exciting things. And we've kind of looked at this in a few different horizons. You have your current day sensors and competition on the far left hand side. We see the next two years kind of as a lot of um, competitive plays focused on not only the similar accuracy, but also making these devices more wearable, more user friendly. And then finally, we see uh, things evolving into that health and wellness space where maybe accuracy isn't as important and really pursuing a lot of lifestyle improvement. So a lot of exciting things happening in this front. And if you kind of put it all together, you can see some of our expectations over the next few years. Um, we see incredible growth happening in this space. It, the, the really the, the battleground, so to speak, from a company perspective will shift from those intensively managed patients to those less, of, less intensively managed patients and then eventually move into that health and wellness space that we talked about. So really exciting time now. And just in closing, I'd like to bring you back to how I started this discussion with the, the absolute explosion of smartphones um, you know, around the year 2013 and, and a little bit prior to that. And I think we're truly on the cusp of that in the CGM space. And so I think all of us look forward to the point in time when CGMs become as ubiquitous as the other technologies like smartphones, when everybody has access to it, whether they have diabetes or they're using it as a health and wellness application. So exciting things happening in this space. We really look forward to the future of CGM. Thank you very much.